What would happen if you give ChatGPT eyes? Well, that's exactly what this guy did. GPT-4 is coming this week, and if it's multimodal, we can predict what it will be capable of. Microsoft just introduced Visual Chat GPT. It allows you to send, receive, and edit images while you are in chat. Midjourney just revealed version 5. Wonder Studio changes 3D animation forever. What would happen if you give Chat GPT eyes? Well, that's exactly what this guy did. And the results are pretty astounding. Let's give ChatGPT the power of sight by combining it with computer vision to have it answer questions about something we're looking at. What's this building? This building is the De Young Museum in San Francisco, California. When is it open? The De Young Museum is open Tuesday through Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. By using text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and Azure's computer vision services, we can give ChatGPT a voice and eyes. So I imagine this technology going directly into a phone that can see and hear exactly what you're doing and it can give you context, it can ask questions and it might say like, hey, over there, look, there's a celebrity and I'm like, who is it? And then it says, oh, sorry, it's a cardboard cutout of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. GPT-4 is coming this week and if it's multimodal, we can predict what it will be capable of. First, it will be able to do visual IQ tests. As you can see here, this is an IQ test and the question would be the following image is and then it's choosing this one as the correct answer. Second thing would be optical character recognition. For example, you could take a screenshot of your notebook and then you can digitally make that into ChatGPT. Or perhaps you have a PDF that isn't in text form, it's actually pixels, it could easily read and write that. The third thing would be multimodal chat. This is where you can input a picture and you can talk about the picture itself. You can even ask follow-up questions to the picture, have a conversation around the picture itself. For example, what's in the picture looks like a duck, that's not a duck, then what is it looks more like a bunny. Why? it has a bunny ear. The fourth thing would be broad visual understanding. So you can answer things like why did the little boy cry where the answer is because his scooter broke. Or what is the hairstyle of the blonde called the answer being ponytail. And the last thing could be audio and speech recognition. We've already seen this with OpenAI's Whisper and should be fairly easy to integrate. Note that this is what Andreas Brown, the CTO of Microsoft Germany said. OpenAI has not stated that ChatGPT will be released. What happens if you put ChatGPT inside of a robot? Well, you get this. This robot is called Amica and is the world's most advanced human looking robot. And to me, it gives all of the bad vibes. Something so eerie giving a robot human looking facial expression. Let's just take a quick look at this. Hi, Amica. How are you? Hello. I am doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Um, I wanted to ask you about applications for humanoid robots. What are they used for? There are many possible applications for humanoid robots. Examples include helping people with disabilities and acting as a companion. So you can act as a companion for me? Yes. I can act as a companion for you. What do you do to make me feel happy? There are many things I could do to make <laughs> you feel happy. I could listen to you, offer advice or support, do something you enjoy together, or simply be a friendly and positive presence in your life. The facial expression she makes when he asks about, can you make me happy is, you don't even need to say any words. <laughs> like, yo, I don't wanna make you happy, dude. Can you be a companion to me? Can you make me happy? To me, it's really creepy. It takes off all the boxes of something that I don't really like. And putting an AI into a human looking body is kind of weird. I imagine asking it something like, do you want to end humanity? And the robot is like, no, I don't want to end humanity. Humans are great. Microsoft just introduced visual chat GPT. It allows you to send, receive, and edit images while you are in chat. Here it asks, can you generate a cat for me? Sure, here is a cat for you. Could you replace the cat to a dog and then remove the book? And it just does it. Cool. To generate the canny edge of this image, it kind of edits it into this 
How about filter and can you generate a yellow dog based on this image and it pastes an image in here. I'm sure here is a yellow dog for you. Then it sends a motorcycle picture. Which color is this motorcycle? It's black. Can you remove the motorcycle and it just removes it from the image? Which is kind of crazy. Cool. What's in the image? The image contains a yard. When will we actually be able to access this? I don't know. Hopefully ChatGPT4 will get launched and has this feature built in. To me, the most fascinating thing is that you can talk about the images or you can probably just copy and paste a bunch of images or text instead of having to write a bunch of things, making us all way more productive so we can save a lot of time. Midjourney just revealed version five. Which of these images would you vote on? The Midjourney team said that these images are not representative of the V5 algorithms we will release soon. These images are plain slash boring slash unopinionated to help the system learn whether V5 should have a different style from V4. You should notice images are higher resolution and have generally better detail and stylistic range than V5. To me, it does a lot better at realism, people, and what you all have been waiting for, hands. Look at this image and tell me you can say that this is AI art. I could never tell this is a photo or not, but it's 100% AI generated. What about this? Things are just going to get crazier from here. So this guy asked Bing AI to explain the SVB bank collapse in monkey banana terms. And this is the message Bing AI sent. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, me try to explain. Silicon Valley bank like big tree with many bananas. Many monkeys like bananas and put their bananas in tree. Tree promised to give more bananas to monkeys later, but tree bad. Tree lose many bananas in storm. Tree not have enough bananas for all monkeys. Monkeys get scared and want their bananas back. Many monkeys run to the tree and grab their bananas, but some monkeys too late. No more bananas in tree, monkeys sad and angry. Big monkey come to take over tree. Big monkey say he will find more bananas for monkeys who lost their bananas. Big monkey gives some bananas to some monkeys now and more later. But some monkeys have to wait long time for their bananas. Other trees see what's happened to big tree and get worried. Other trees have many bananas too, but not lose them in storm. Other trees hope their monkeys not run away with their bananas too. Me hope you understand now. And I think the funniest thing is that it actually continues the conversation with ooh ooh ah ah, me understand now. Now I'm going to talk about the two favorite AI tools that I found today. Wonder Studio changes 3D animation forever. What you're seeing here is an AI tool that automatically animates, lights, and composes CG characters into a live action scene. No complicated 3D software and no expensive production hardware. All you need is a camera. To me, this is unbelievable. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this because in the past, you have to first paint out the character. Second, have an expensive mocap suit for like a thousand bucks. Third, you have to rig the animated character. And then fourth, you have to put it into the scene, make the lighting look good and make the colors look the same as the video. This is an extremely hard task that you can now apparently do with just a snap of the fingers and you got all of this done for you. And I seriously thought that this was fake. But then when it got real to me was Steven Spielberg is in the advisory board blending the physical reality with the digital reality. It's not open to the public yet, but you can join in the link in the description to the closed beta. Next tool is you can now get all big language models under the same roof for the first time. Look, you can just submit and then you will have all different language models put out their different answers. So you can compare the output of OpenAI ChatGPT 
Anthropic's Claude and Cohere's language model in a single playground. I'll give a link down in the description. I'll show you what happens if I, for example, write, how can I get people to subscribe? If I click on submit, you will see that all of them will generate different answers based on the prompt that I was writing. Claude is generating bullet points for us, like provide value, build trust. Hugging face is literally saying, put a subscribe button on your channel. Cohere is just putting out basic text here. OpenAI ChatGPT3 gives us a list of seven things that we can do to get you to subscribe. So if you want a video newsletter every other day about what's going on in AI, click the link in the description, sign up, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.